Welcome to Kino Society. With Owen Shapiro. Welcome to Kino Society. In today's episode, we have Alexander Robinson, a film critic who has always loved movies. Pursuing his passion, he attended the University of California, Santa Cruz, where he majored in critical film studies. Then he began reviewing movies on YouTube, like The Real Mr. Robinson, where he has more than 4,000 followers. Welcome to Kino Society, Alexander. Thank you for having me on, Owen. Would you mind telling us a bit about your background and what drew you to film criticism? Yeah, uh, well, I come from, both of my parents work in the film industry, so I've always sort of had a lot of exposure to movies through them. But for some reason, I never actually wanted to go into film production. There was just always that side of me where I wanted to, I just felt better talking about movies and I got more joy out of talking movies rather than making them. But, um, and I just, you know, it really started when I was just doing it for fun, uh, writing small movie reviews on, uh, this site no longer exists, but Flickster.com. It used to be part of, I think Facebook used to own it at one point. I just started doing written reviews there. And it took me a couple of years before I actually started transitioning into doing video reviews on YouTube because I always hated how my voice sounded. Uh, but eventually, once I got into college, I overcame that fear. And uh, over time, like I just started talking about movies made an effort to try to see as many new releases as possible while reviewing some old ones, whether they be good or bad. And that's pretty much how I ended up where I am now. All right. Is there any movie that you'd call your favorite? It's really hard uh, to pick out a movie that is your absolute all-time favorite. And this actually took me a couple of years to really uh, realize because I had picks from, say, Jaws or the original Godzilla from 1954 but I have to say Back to the Future is probably the closest thing to me saying is my favorite movie of all time because it's it's literally a perfect movie great cast a very tight script very clever uh moments scattered throughout it's just in my eyes it's a perfect movie and it's one that I literally never get tired of watching yeah, that movie has a very good screenplay. So do you ever, it seems like you mostly talk about mainstream movies, so do you ever delve into more indie or unknown stuff? Uh, I do. Uh, it's not as often because from a from a creator standpoint on YouTube, sometimes those smaller movies don't get a whole lot of attention in terms of views, which if you're, which by the way, I should say for anyone who's looking into becoming a film critic on YouTube. That is not the mentality you want to have go going into this through um, the eyes of views. You want to have a passion when you do this stuff. But I have talked about some smaller movies. Uh, again, not as often, but a couple of examples I can name. Uh, last year, I talked about First Cow. Two years ago, uh, 2019, I talked about this movie that debuted at South by Southwest called Villains with Bill Skarsgård and Micah Monroe. And whenever I come across a smaller movie that I really like, or not, not just like, but love, I try to get the word out and emphasize how good this movie is. Like, no, you, you guys got to see this. Uh, I know there's some bigger movie coming out right now, or at least in the before times, but uh, give this little one a shot. You won't be disappointed. So... Is there anything that you would say in particular you don't understand why it became so popular or why it's so loved? Maybe the other way around as well, that you like something that usually isn't liked. Uh, it, you mean as in like a movie that comes out and I'm just shocked that pe more people don't love it? A movie that either other most people like that you don't or that you like that most people don't. You know, it's one of those... Uh, it's one of those things where you are in a are a critic for as long as eight years and you have to really train yourself to acknowledge that other people have opinions and 
like you, you're not re- your goal is to not change their mind about it because that's going to be a very impossible task. And if you keep obsessing with trying to change everyone's opinion on a movie that you have a different opinion on, then it's going to be a no-win situation. But it's, sometimes it's a little difficult to understand why people don't like a certain movie that you love. For example, last year, uh, David Fincher's Mank. I I really love that movie. And a lot of it is mainly because of the way it was made to act like a movie that was made during the 1940s uh, to where they had to basically relearn how to make movies from that decade. But a lot of people in my critics guild uh, didn't like it so much. They didn't say it was bad. They were just like, eh, it, it's fine. It's a fine movie. And again, I just have to pull myself back and just be like, oh, come on, really? But what about this? So it's, it again, it takes a lot of trial and error. Yeah, I, I agree with them. That movie was, honestly, most people really like that from what I've seen. I thought it was just okay, though. Mank, right? See, I'm, tr- see, I'm trying to hold back right now. That's how much I've been practicing. So how would you describe your personal taste? I'm more, I'm definitely more of a science fiction type of guy. I mean, I'll, I, I, I like any type of film genre out there as long my belief is like as long as the movie is good I don't care what genre it belongs into but there's just something about science fiction that it, it's just hmm, it's it's weird to this how do I actually put it and I feel like with science fiction it's just um, these things that could possibly exist exist at one point um, And there's a lot of imagination put into creating certain worlds, uh, uh, whether it be a certain piece of technology or a new language or an alien race, uh, like a movie that comes to mind from the last decade. I think is one of the best of the last decade was Arrival. Uh, Just basically, it's an alien invasion movie, but the aliens just come down and want to talk to us on Earth. And the whole theme of that movie is communication. Feel like science fiction where is where a lot of creativity comes in, and the best science fiction movies are probably the most subtle for me. Yeah, that makes sense. I think I isn't Arrival the one where it's about trying to communicate the language of the aliens. Yeah, it's a uh, Denise Villeneuve with Amy Adams and Jeremy Renner. Yeah, that was a good movie. I really like that one. Um, how has your vlogging changed since you started? To copy someone else's success in terms of like their style of film criticism. Like when uh, a lot of people would base their style off of the angry video game nerd nostalgia critic. But as time goes on, you realize that you're going to have to make your own style. You're just going to have to be you and not try to be someone else in front of the camera. And again, that sort of takes time to get used to and doing like a side-by-side comparison of the videos I made back then in 2013 versus now, eight years later, it's just, it's like night and day, but it's also really cringeworthy to watch your videos from eight years ago when you were just a clueless moron starting out. (laughs) So are there any specific YouTubers or critics you admire or follow? One of the big uh, names that got me into um, wanting to do this Um, are Corey Coleman from uh, Corey Coleman and Martin Thomas from Double Toasted because back in the day there was this website called they ran a website called spill.com where it was pretty much animated movie reviews but it was done in a way where it was really just a bunch of friends sitting around a table talking about movies and uh, it was ad-libbed there were notes but it felt very natural and that's how I want my uh, reviews to come off. I want to come across like I'm having a conversation with somebody else rather than actually reading a script and uh, just going down note beat for beat on everything that I want from a movie or everything that I 
like or dislike about whatever movie I'm talking about. Uh, Is, do you think there's such thing as objective film criticism? Absolutely, because um, I can tell you there are a ton of movies that you people will have disagreements on, and the people that really either like or dislike a movie, they're probably going to have uh, certain personal feelings towards said movie. Yeah? I, an example that I could give right off the bat is um, A Bug's Life. Huh? Kind of a weird example, but as the years, as I got older, I realized that Bug's Life tends to fall into like everyone's bottom list of Pixar movies in the sense that it's not as beloved as I thought when I was a kid. And there's a lot of personal attachment that I have to that movie uh, that only I can understand. So I can't, again, film's incredibly subjective and it's ultimately like your opinions, whether it's your personal, like, relationship to a movie what a certain movie reminded you of that it's movies are going to affect you in very different ways and even with the negative side if there's a movie that tackles a subject matter that you personally find offensive then that's like that's your what who you are it's not really fair to sometimes i don't think it's fair to really criticize a movie for its personal for something that it does that you personally find offensive, but that's just who you are. How Are there any movies that your opinion of has completely changed over time? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the biggest example that, um, that I can give, and I honestly like, don't like talking about this movie, is Joker. Uh, when I first saw that movie, I thought it was good. Like, I didn't fall in love with it or anything. Um, I just thought it was a fine uh, comic book movie that had an interesting take on the Joker. But the more that time went on and the more like I really thought back on the movie, it just deteriorated for me. I watched it a second time and I'm like, wow, this is actually awful. Like it, it's not even, uh, it doesn't even stay true to who the Joker is. It's trying to humanize and have you feel sympathy for this psychotic, uh, this character that at its, his core is psychotic just because he wants to be psychotic. He's not trying to do a wrong. And I feel like that movie completely missed the mark. And I don't know. It just, Joker is a movie that really did not sit well with me. On the opposite end, uh, Bridesmaids was a movie that I saw for the first time in theaters when it came out in 2011, and I hated it. Like, I just didn't understand why so many people loved it when it came out. And then I rewatched it again uh, two years ago. I'm like, you know what? This is actually really funny. What, was, what mood was I in to where I just didn't like this? Because if I could go back in time and like tell my 20-year-old self, hey, you're actually going to really like Bridesmaids later on. I thought my older self would be crazy because that's like, yeah, my opinion for those, both of those movies has really changed. Yeah, I absolutely, I have not seen Bridesmaids, but I absolutely agree with Joker. That movie, I thought it was okay when it came out, but it, it's really kind of oversimplifies the issue of mental illness. It's very, yeah, it really just did not know what it was doing at times. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've talked about Joker a lot on my channel. Well, maybe not a lot, but I've definitely had a, my final say on Joker. And of all the, like, movies to do, of all, like, the comic book characters to do a movie about mental health with, the Joker is the absolute wrong character. But that's all I'll say. So do you have any future plans? Uh, well, my big thing I'm doing right now on YouTube is I'm going through all the Disney animated movies that I have not reviewed uh, every Wednesday until I'm finished. So that would be the movies I have to review are um, everything from Snow White to Wreck-It Ralph. I, and just today, as we're recording this uh, review, I put up my review for Fantasia. And then... Just a lot of other uh, videos that I have planned. I'm doing a watch, a live watch party series for the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe because this was something I had planned to do as a result of the pandemic just to put out more content, but I didn't get around to it last year. 
And uh, my ultimate goal is to try to continue beyond this year, try to continue doing my YouTube reviews, uh, but also uh, step up as an entertainment host for uh, like uh, IGN or uh, Entertainment Weekly. I, I would like to work for a major outlet beyond uh, just my movie reviews on YouTube. What advice would you give to an aspiring film critic or f filmmaker? Be yourself. That's probably the most important advice that I can give anyone. You can be inspired by uh, other people who are doing movie reviews on YouTube, like Chris Stuckman or Double Toasted, but don't try to copy them. If you try copying what they do, then you're not going to get the full attention. Uh, if you just be yourself and you be completely honest uh, with your opinions, no matter how controversial they might be, you'll stick out. You'll get people who come in and go, you know what? I don't agree with this person, but he's very honest about what he's saying. So I like him or her. Uh, yeah, just, just don't be afraid to be yourself and don't be afraid of trying to go along with the general public and what they think. Uh, if you really feel like there's a movie out there that everyone's loving that you just don't, tell them how much you don't like that movie. But Uh, on that same note, if I were to give another piece of advice, don't dedicate your uh, bulk of your criticisms to negativity. It's very important that you celebrate movies and celebrate the stuff that you love rather than just utterly focusing on the stuff that you hate. That will definitely make you, um, for personal experience, talking about the stuff that you love rather than the stuff that you hate uh, will help with your mental health. Where can my listeners find and connect with you? Uh, you can find me on youtube.com forward slash the real Mr. Robinson. Again, that's, that'll be your source for movie reviews and other uh, reviews out there, whether they be television uh, stuff, which I don't review as often because uh, TV is a little more, I have to dedicate more time to TV than I would a movie. But main, uh, YouTube is my main uh, outlet. You can also find me on twitch.tv slash real Mr. Robinson. I just started doing uh, Twitch streams this year, actually. And then also on YouTube, you can find links to my uh, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, and Patreon accounts. That's all for today. Don't forget you can subscribe to Kino Society on iTunes and Spotify. Mm -hmm.